Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Pineapple Podcast, where it's all about being tough on the outside, sweet on the inside, and wearing your crown of gratitude proudly. So in today's episode, we have Mark, Mark Hernandez, and he is all about short-term rental and Pokemon. Now, I know it sounds a little like, where does Pokemon come into it? But he has found a way to make it playful, to build some synergies between Pokemon and real estate investing that's absolutely brilliant. Mark, welcome to the Pineapple Podcast. Hey, guys. Hey, Mitch. Thank you for having me. Um, glad to be here. Welcome. Welcome. Absolutely. Look, we want to jump into this for sure. You know, like we, we see you, we hear about you, Mark. Uh, we always, you know, you've taken a unique position with Pokemon. So I'm sure all the viewers are like, okay, how does Pokemon tie in with real estate? All right. So, yes. So like my background, this is Pokemon. Okay, a little backtrack in the story. I'm in my mid-30s. I'm a millennial. I, I entered my 30s where there is the hype of Pokemon Go. Although growing up, I I grew up with this anime, you know, so Pokemon and, and then Pokemon Go. So what Pokemon Go, for people who doesn't know it, is like geocaching and virtual. So you use an app to walk around, and then there's built-in virtual reality where you catch these digital Pokemons. Now, translating that, oh, okay, so you catch that, you evolve them, because these are animals, and to evolve them to their highest potential to fight to the gym and to use them to like to battle and to get more badges. Now, what does it something to do with real estate? So I translated that into the same strategy for my real estate, which is short-term rental or Burr SDR. So you use your app, like the realtor.ca or Zillow in the US or anything that, you know, like which, which properties are for sale within my backyard. And you walk around because it's location-based and it's like, okay, this sounds good. I can capture this. And instead of using Pokeballs, you use the sold sign to capture that, um, capture that real estate and then evolve them to their highest income potential, which is short-term rental. So which usually the long-term rents are 1X or, you know, like fixed, but then with short-term rental, you can make it 2X, 3X or 4X. So that's what I meant with highest income potential and then collect them all, you know, so buy and hold. Because if the if the Pokemon is making money to you, if the geese is laying eggs, why would you sell it? Absolutely. I love, I love the analogy. So collect them all, you know, basically, grow your portfolio, increase the number of doors, increase the start strategies that you're using. And, you know, Mark, tell us a little bit, like I know you had a career before and then you decided, okay, real estate is your space. How did you decide that real estate was the vehicle versus let's say a uh, stock market or, or, or the, um, you know, or, or gold trading or, or cash trading? Like why, why real estate and how did you kind of, move over from your sort of your career into the real estate space. Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess start, it starts with mindset. So my, 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 go, my, my powerful, everyone's like, how did you start? What would be your like recommendation for me? It's mindset. And for me, it started with the book, rich dad, poor dad, which I think so many of you guys will relate. And then it opened my mindset knowing that, Hey, financial freedom, and, you know, that quadrant from employee to, you know, self-employed business and investor. So you want to be to exit the rat race at the same time on the on the right side of the quadrant. Now, he didn't th he didn't tell you which one is you want your real estate, if you want the stocks, but you just have to have that mindset. So whichever you're comfortable is made me stocks, yes. bitcoins, crypto. For me, real estate is good. How? So background of my story, I am a travel nurse. So my background is emergency. So I travel around the country. Actually, not just the country. I travel to the States and the Caribbean so um, to work as a nurse. That yeah. being said, um, yes, uh, we need a place to stay whenever we travel. And for me, I'm not a big fan of rent. So it's either or you have to pay. Either you pay your landlord or you pay yourself. I'd rather pay myself. So from that, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll buy a property. Well, initially with my um, primary residence, and then when I'm away, I was like, okay, my, my house is sitting empty. I can turn it on and make it income generating and then turn it off when I have to use it. So that helped. But then the building that I wasn't in didn't allow the short-term rental, which is another topic for another day. Um, and then say for me, it's like, okay, you know, I can go into the build around my portfolio around the hospitals because after that, my doctor friends, my nurses friends like, hey, Mark, I know you have Airbnb. Do you have some in here? Hey, we need one. And they keep on repeating because these are like visiting doctors, visiting nurses. 
So I have that unfair advantage that I already, it's like a chicken and the egg. So I already have that already like tenant. And these are like A plus tenant, they will pay premium and they really wanted proximity to the hospital. So this is the guest avatar among nine or 10, which I will discuss in some future um, that um, that I discovered. So getting get the guest avatar. And for me, I love designing things. So turning, yes. uh, yes, turning a, a, a real estate into their highest income potential and then evolving them into their Pokemon level and then making money out of it. So I think it all boils down to my strategy and I'm being comfortable with real estate because I can control it. It's a tangible asset. You can, it appreciates, it cash flow, mortgage pay down. So, and the more I, I delve into this, the more I get addicted and it gamifying and enjoying the experience because you get money in return towards your financial freedom. Nice. Love it. Absolutely love it. And I want to get into the, the strategy now because you've actually found quite a, a unique strategy that a lot of people are only now discovering, uh, which is the short-term rental space, right? Um, lots to learn about it, lots to understand about it. Uh, but tell us, you know, like like you said, you 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 can 2x, 5x, 10x. It just depends on the opportunity. But what gravitated you uh, to that that space in terms of the 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 return on investment? Like, how did you start calculating and seeing that there's true potential here for you to not only grow, let let real estate grow year over year, but now you're in the ability to turn cash over. I think that's just such a unique uh, position. Okay. So I think my perfect example for this is my first Pokemon, which is in Tofino, which for everybody, you know, is the surfing capital of Canada. If you Google that, that would be it. So it's a resort. It's a vacation rental. So perfect. Those are your like, check, 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 like the prototype for a vacation rental, which is one of the guest avatars in short term rental. So I bought a two bedroom condo because I love the place. I got I, I worked there and I love the place. I fell in love. I was like, I want a slice of paradise. Probably that would be like a Florida for people or Palm Springs or Arizona. Like there's no birds right there. So you want to own your place that you can go visit when you want to visit, right? So same concept. Right. But that time, I still love my career. I still want to do travel. But at the same time, oh, uh, you know, what will I do? It's sitting empty. I'm not using the space. Again, the beauty of it is you can turn it on. It's very flexible. Turn it off if you want to use it to your um place. So 2015, I bought that two-bedroom condo 350 okay and then it's cash flowing um from day one because it's already running as an airbnb um and then but then how would how would i manage it because i still want to work because it will requires a lot of man same with long-term rent you hire a property manager it's an easy fit and that's very familiar if you want to manage it by all means if you have the dedication if you're around the property yes but if for me when i'm traveling I, I want to like set it, forget it, because I will be away. I cannot be bothered to fly all the way from <laughs> East Coast to fix a toilet, you know, things like that. So grab a friend, uh, went for coffee, handshake. So that's a property manager. Um, you should, The thing, though, with short-term rental, it is bigger percentage. I know with long-term rent, it's 8 to 10% or even 12 But with short-term rental, the industry standard is 25 to 30%. But, you know, at the end of the day, you still make money at, uh, you know, at the end of the month, cash flowing. So, um, so that 350 makes 10 to 15,000 a month, makes 60 to 70 a year. So that's like my salary right there. It's like, that's enough for me to retire, you know, but then little did I know, that's just one strategy of making money. You can also, so that's cash flow. Um, right. Regardless of your um, strategy, you, you have mortgage pay down, maybe land, single family, multifamily, you pay mortgage into it. So mortgage pay down is one. Cash flow is another one. The yes. bonus is the equity. So I, in a prime market, that's a good thing with vacation rentals. So that 350, a um, couple of years down the road became 1.3. So wow. I was able like that, my first million right there. And then take that money out. So the Burr refinance, take the money out and buy more Pokemon. So with 1 million, I buy my five, like a 20% down. So, and then repeat, yes. rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and then repeat the process until you build your portfolio. So I guess that's my Burr SDR, mortgage pay down, <laughs> equity, and then cash yes. flow. I love Not it. to mention, I'm... there's also yeah. like uh, depreciation, uh, capital mm -hmm. cost allowance, the furniture, and then the GST. Oh man, there's so many. Yes, absolutely. You know, once you, you transform your real estate into a business, then the accountants, they have fun. 
they they can be so creative in terms of what is allowed to you to be deducted. They know it inside out and they do it. That's why it's always important to get a good accountant that understands real estate investing because they can definitely help you make more cash than you can believe. Uh, but I, I, there's a few things here that I really want to unpack. So a $350,000 investment turned into a $1.3 million investment. This is the beauty with real estate because you have no idea where the market will go, but you do know that typically the real estate market goes up. Even when it slows down, like it is right now with the recession, we still anticipate that there's a few fundamentals, especially in the Canadian market, where housing is still a uh, shortage. More people are continuously coming into the country. So there's just not enough houses to provide for people. Once the economy gets back into recovery mode, again, real estate tends to, to accelerate. So this is why investors like yourself, like me and like other people, this is why you continuously want to acquire property uh, as long as you understand the numbers, you know, because it grows uh, exponentially. But at the same time, when you find a cash generating strategy like SDRs, I mean, you're in a real win-win situation now, right? Because the SDR just gives you a phenomenal amount of um, return, like, like you're saying, 2x, 3x, 4x five times what you typically get in a in a long-term rental. So I love that about you. So Mark, tell us about some of the other properties that you continue to acquire in order to, to get this, uh, this strategy that you're loving so much uh, to grow. Okay. Um, so as you go through this journey, you know, like playing game, sometimes you will go on to another level, level two, level three, you unlock higher level and bigger Pokemons, you know. So if this is applicable to a single family home, chances are um, most probably, yeah, not, not most probably, but really, um, it is applicable for multifamily as well, which my company is delving into it. Multifamily plus short-term rental. Because once you experience the beauty of multifamily, you don't want to go back to the single family. But, you know, I want to have a, because like, my one short-term rental, that first one is equivalent to two multis. So like small multi. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, again, it's not it's not just your typical cabin, cottage. You can take a building, a duplex, a multifamily, short-term rental, and, and that's like one. Uh, I haven't seen that much in Canada, but in the States, it's very, and mostly States, is very advanced two to three years. So to give you an example, I stayed in a, a building in Austin two months, three months ago. Uh, when I attended a short-term rental conference, I stayed in a 60-unit fully automated short-term rental. So you get you, they are using technology to manage this property. You download an app, you scan a QR code. Oh yeah, it's my it's my check-in time. Perfect. I scan the QR code, you get in, you go into your unit. There is a fob key inside there. You key in your code in the keyless entry. And then that fob code is your access to the gym, to the swimming pool. So it's like a hotel, but no no concierge, you don't have to line up to get verified because the app already verified you. Um, nice. All the instructions are in there, guest communications are handled, and people like it. I guess also the pandemic really changed the way because they tried to limit the human interaction. At the same yes. time, I think with the current situation, nobody wants to work. It's relying on people as human resource. It's challenging, That's right? right? right. But also when you explore, the, for those of you guys in the multifamily space, the goal is to cut on your expenses and increase your income. So if you cut your payroll with your people that you're paying, you significantly decrease your expenses, but increasing your cash flow, their wide evaluation, the NOI, the cap rate, and all those like jargons in the multifamily are all up, right? So I think it's another great strategy that we're exploring. And I think we're going to see that in the future. Absolutely. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, for sure, you know, technology is game changing. Uh, because again, in this case, I mean, you're talking a 60 unit building, all fully automated and all SDR, right? So it depends on where you're investing. Like the, the Canadian market uh, does have some limitations for sure, because more and more we're seeing towns, municipalities, uh, cities putting a lot of restrictions on the SDR business model. Yet SDR makes a lot of sense from a commercial business because you are generating a lot of interest, people coming in, visiting the towns, visiting the cities, bringing that dollar, going to the restaurants, doing their shopping. Like there's so much energy around it from an economic perspective that the cities are not seeing. 
Uh, one of the, the challenges, as you could appreciate, is, oh, they're going to trash the place. The, the, the visitors are terrible. And even for ourselves, we're in the same space as well. And we're finding totally opposite. They're actually very reasonable. They're very uh, conscientious about your property. They leave it spotless. And so, but sometimes you feel they leave it a little bit cleaner than when they got it, right? So I think I that the, the Airbnbs, the, the DNAs, the, you know, the, the stay, whatever, uh, VRBO, they're all doing a good job in trying to filter out the right clients uh, so that they get the right clients. And so that way you have people repeating uh, using the, the platforms, but better quality so that you can actually have a viable business. What's your experience with, let's say, the bad guest? Have you um, had it? Yes, you know, at some point you will have, but not as much. Um, but then I was going to, I want to refer back to what you mentioned. You brought a really good point on the SEO regulations, right? Like it's really one of the challenge in this certain rental space. But um, have you heard of hotels being regulated by the cities? No, right? Correct. Because it's, yeah, right. So that's another reason that's why multifamily will be a thing because it's higher density, is zoned as commercial, and then it's it's not for oh you're you're stealing the 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 affordability of housing but no because these multifamily are built not for people to live multifamilies are built for investors like us that's why it's very appealing you Absolutely. government will be out of your way you will be considered as hotel it's zoned for higher density and the the income and the revenue is there now of course there uh, parties bad people it's there's always that bad apple or bad pineapple uh, but there are ways to mitigate it, you know, like, right. like in real estate, it's risky, but there are ways to mitigate the risk. And there are so many technological, um, advanced product out there to give you an example, let's say, for example, the camera for one. So one thing to, in the, in is, is standard in the industry is verifying that the, that the, that the guest that booked the, uh, the reservation is the same guest that's checking in. So the camera will verify that the face is the one that in the at the same time the number of guests. So you say three guests, but then it showed up in the door five guests. Okay, that's a red flag right there because you have the control and the keyless entry. You can notify the guests, hey, you only before you can enter, you have to pay an extra charge for the the guest. Or if you can only do three, then sorry, we have to. It's a violation. It's a breach of terms. Going to right from the there, it's mitigated. At the same time, you have their credit card, so the you can always charge the um damage deposit security and things like that. Hey, you clearly acknowledge before we we went into this booking because usually when you start their booking, twenty four hours they have to review the house rules, make sure they comply, and that's enough for you in the liability perspective and insurance. Second, once you're already in the building, uh, there are three. I think one is Wi Fi, so there is some Wi Fi capability that that monitors how many people are connected in the Wi Fi. So let's say there's only three or four gadgets, but then um uh that that are registered, but then it's showing that there's ten. So that will alert the owner and the guest, like hey, there's exceeding the you know. So that's an, one layer of mitigating. Another one is the noise aware. So there are some noise um monitoring um gadgets that you can install in your um unit. They do not listen to the conversation, but you set the decibel uh, acceptable right. based on the number of their of the uh, of of the guest, um, and it's not just like a one time thing. It should be a sustained noise for five minutes and enough to like, and it will automatically trigger. Hey, the noise is we have only have uh, five eight to five or six, and then uh, PM based on our agreement, it's already eight PM. Tone it down. So one one warning, and then second, and then if not, then you will have to do some um some mitigation. You know, right. Um, and another thing is virtual assistance because you know as you know as 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 really as it's very time demanding you can use yes. employ the capability of virtual assistance to monitor this because anything that you can work uh you can do on, on your com in your computer you can they can do that as well and they can also do a special answering service which they can call the guest so really taking that away from you so you can focus more on your strategy not in your business but on your business 100 percent. no i love love all of that this is this is such important insights for people coming into the SDR space because a lot of times they don't understand it. They don't know how technology can help you, right? 
Um, so this is absolutely brilliant because this allows you to really push it forward. What about uh, camera use? There's a lot of questions around cameras uh, in the space. Some people feel it's a violation of their visits. So what has been your experience? Right, yes. So that's a very hot topic in the industry. I think you're all only outside. Outside when they do the doorbell, but inside right. you can't, because definitely that's like a privacy issue. Um, one thing I really use it is because when you have a pool or a jacuzzi, based on the liability side of things, is for you because um, for if you have to file insurance, then that's just a supporting documents. But the mm. location, yes, and you have to mention it in your listing that there is a camera, and when they book their uh, when they book a reservation with you, they have to acknowledge yes, I've seen that that there's a camera. I acknowledge that, and then I, that's what uh, I I'm booking it, knowing that there is a camera in the building. So that's your mitigation. But yes, it's a very touchy topic. Not as much in my avatar because my mostly is in a condo building. And um, I mitigated that because I have repeated guests and I have a plus tenant profile. They're professional. They are just there to work. Uh, they're to sleep because they work 12 to 16 hours. They don't have time to party. Yeah. That's why I, I use this uh, guest avatar that I have. Yeah, no, it's and it's a, it's a valid question because like I say, I get it all the time and, and it's good to always have the conversations around it. Uh, some people, they they follow it. They're like, no, I, I I have a faith in my guests. I know that they're coming at a certain level, certain ratings. Um, so therefore, they, there's no need for it. But to your point, you need it in some places, maybe the outside and when you're checking in, part of the automatic check-in process and definitely where there's liability issues, right? But the fact is, they must be aware of the, the cameras where it's located on the property, 100%. So Correct. yeah, so this is this is quite an exciting space for sure. A um, lot of traction as well. But Mark, so tell us what's kind of like, what's what's the future plans for you as you continue to grow your real estate? Okay, well, the game is addicting, leveling up, <laughs> unlocking every level, and then meeting other Pokemon trainers. So we went into a partnership. I met two other Pokemon trainers. We created our company and together we're tackling on bigger Pokemons or multifamily. Last year, we did two multifamily buildings, one in Vancouver Island, BC. We bought a fourplex and we're turning it into a fully automated short-term rental because of that concept that I've seen. And then last month or last December, we acquired a 32-unit building in Northern Alberta. Um, uh, and there, the, the town is very uh, proponent of short-term rental because it's an in and out oil and gas. So we are tar targeting that as a um, guest avatar and then throwing yeah. into like vending machines, um, QR it. code. Yeah. yeah. So my, another value add, uh, we're also offering um, EV chargers uh, and things like that. So watch out for that. Uh, if you guys want to follow me in social media, uh, I, I it's new in the industry. Lots of uh, people are interested, but I am excited to bring that over because that strategy is, like I said, very new in the industry. I haven't seen any in Canada. Um, so I want, I'm more than happy to do that um, and and uh, be the leader in that path. Uh, what's what's for us? So we have lots of people want to learn about short term rental and they're really pushing me like, hey, Mark, can you please, please share your knowledge? So um, we are launching our program or course. I think I'm maybe 25 or 30 because I cannot handle that much. But uh, yeah, so if you are really interested and you think this is in your wheelhouse, please reach out to any of our team. Uh, we're doing kind of like a mastermind and you have a coaching call with me. You can ask what whatever um, every week. We are bottleneck, your short-term rental questions, your console, you know, I'll be there to guide you and become make you a, your Pokemon trainer. And of course, you'll be surrounded by SDR um, investors. I like that. I'm building a community. Uh, also, I created our group, Canadian Short-Term Rental, Mid-Term Rental, Corporate Rental Community, where we can discuss topics, how we can push the socioeconomic impact of short-term regulations. There's public policy, advocacy, and um, lots of projects undergo in the short-term rental space. Um, I'm also wearing my Airbnb Community Leader shirt that was given to me by Airbnb because they feel like, hey, Mark, you are the leader in the industry. I think you are a very um, insightful and very uh, inspirational leader that people can resonate onto and people want to follow you. Uh, and then in terms of projects, so there's the education part. Um, Boutique Hotel is another multifamily short-term rental that we're looking into. If that's something that you're interested in, feel, uh, feel free to reach out. And also be in my background as a nurse. 
we are tackling multifamily and nursing background, which are nursing homes. So we are underwriting a deal right now for a nursing home, 96 beds in South Carolina. Um, so that's those are exciting things with like, if you think that 2X, 3X is the cash flow, this is like in steroids, like maybe 10 or 20X. So yes, yeah, yeah. so lots on the go. Yeah, I love that. So you're actually tying in your, your experience and your background into the real estate space. Sounds like you have a lot of amazing things on the go for sure. So again, you know, I appreciate uh, you being here. Uh, just for our viewers as well, sort of any, um, how do we, how best do we contact you? Is it through your website or just your social media? Right. Oh yeah. I'm a very social media person, guys. Find me on Facebook, Mark Hernandez, or find that Facebook group, um, Canadian SDR, MTR corporate rental community. I run that group. I created that group. I always monitor that. Or if you want to, um, get to know about coaching program, or our SDR course, that would be under my company, www.unitumholdings.com. Um, and yeah, feel free. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can always, you can see my Pokemon shirt in in, in Facebook, and that's me. My, me holding my Pokemon and uh, and a, a, a glass of champagne because I love to travel in business class. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's like a, love a it, little love plug it, there. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. And I'll put your, your information in the uh, comments down below. Uh, and again, Mark, you know, appreciate you giving us all these insights in terms of short-term rental, how you can optimize it, how you can grow your business around it, and and also, you know, connecting and you giving back as well. Because as you know, uh, with the Pineapple Podcast as well, it's all about giving back to the community. And I also, as you appreciate, do the coaching as well. So it's great to to be in front of like-minded people as well, you know. I, I think Thanks, that's Mitch. how we grow as a community for sure. And looking forward to see uh, see what's uh, what's next on your horizon as well, you know. So uh, any last minute tip for our guys before we say goodbye? Um, keep keep crushing it, guys. So you know, keep the momentum. <laughs> I know it can be really lonely, but like Mitch said, being surrounded, like attend this free podcast, make or or free webinars or free yeah, like the community, make use of it. That's your like hack. If you're surrounded by people that are doing it, chances are you will be like, you will go with their momentum. So that's my take for today, I guess. Thank uh, you very much, right. Mark. So guys, again, you heard it right here at the Pineapple Podcast. Remember to hit the like, subscribe, and notify button. Share this with a friend because the more people we have in the community learning about real estate, the better their lives can be. Uh, we're always happy to give back. So once again, remember, it's about being tough on the outside, sweet on the inside, Wearing your crown of gratitude, power. Everybody, have a great day. Bye bye. Ah, love it, Mark. <laughs>